All right, so when it comes to getting our NSX environment online and operational, I'm actually going to go ahead and close this guy out considering I don't need him to be working anymore. I'm literally just going to be in here. We have to actually deploy a couple of things. We go to here to installation and upgrade, and if you follow from left to right and you hit this tab, then you come down to NSX Manager, we can see that he's good to go. And then we have NSX Controllers. The NSX Controller is going to host the control plane. The NSX Manager hosts the management plane. The NSX Manager pushes the config down to the controller. The controller pushes the config. Everybody's happy. So what I'm going to go do first and foremost is we come back over here to our DNS server. We minimize this. And we look right here. We can see DC1 NSX Control 10.0.0.22. This is going to be the IP address that we assign to our NSX controller. So I'm going to come down to NSX controller nodes, and I'm going to add a controller node. And that controller node is going to get added to, go ahead and pull up our topology, is going to get added to our host node. So we come down here one to our management cluster. We're going to go ahead and deploy this guy right here. So without any further ado, let us go ahead and take care of that. I'm going to go ahead and add. I'm not going to deploy all three of them. <laughs> I'm only going to deploy a single one. Go ahead and associate the password, the 12 character password I've been using. Password is capital P at sign SSW0RD1234. Click next. And then we're going to have to choose the name. So I'm just going to come in here and NSX controller node seems like a, a winner. The cluster resource pool, we're going to put this is in the management. The data store is going to be host for distributed uh, data store one. What network are we going to associate this to? Well, that's a good question. We come over here, we can look at connected to, we have a number of devices that we can associate to. I'm going to associate to management because that's what we're going to need to do. Now, here's the only caveat to this. The management that I've got set up is to the host itself, okay? Where there are going to be nodes that are going to be sitting on, side, on top of this ESXi host that are going to need to be reachable through the data plane. So I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the plus sign, move this guy over here, and I'm going to connect to the vCenter server appliance again. I'm going to have one tab open for vCenter specific operations. So I'm going to come over here, menu, hosts and clusters. And I'm also going to have this one open for vCenter or for NSX. So I need to come over here to the logical networking and I need to go ahead and add a another port group. So this one here is going to be actions, distributed port group, new DPG. I'm going to call this here VDS uh, management port group and then click on next. I'm going to no VLAN ID here is going to be VLAN zero next and then finish. And that's where I'm going to put this guy. I'm going to come back into here. I'm going to go down to network, come back down again, and the management port group is there. So it basically just does a poll to go find it. I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. And then it needs to have a pool. Let's select the IP pool that we're going to go ahead and deploy. I'm going to create a new pool. And in here, I'm going to call this the DC1 NSX control pool. Now, if I had multiple NSX controllers, this I would obviously have several of them. So 10.0.0.1. 24-bit prefix, 10.0.0.254 is our DNS server. And the range that we're going to give this is literally going to be, what's the IP address that we have here? 10.0.0.22. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in here 10.0.0.22 through 10.0.0.22. So it's just going to be one IP. Click on Save. NSX Control Pool. We're going to click the little radio button there and click on OK. Now we've got everything added. I'm going to go ahead and we can choose the host if we want to. I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. Click on finish. And then now he's going to go ahead and deploy. Now we come over here. We can see that we're deploying the OVF template, right? We click over here and I go back to hosting clusters. I can see that the NSX controller is being deployed. After a second or two, he should we should see what the utilization is going to look like. This will take a couple of minutes to do, but it actually goes rather quickly considering the environment that we're in. So you can see that the, prop, uh, the propagation is working as we need it to. So I'm going to pause while this piece is doing its thing, 
And then once the NSX controller is deployed, we'll be able to move to our next tab to the right, which is gonna be host preparation, or essentially pushing the NSX control bits down to the ESXi hosts. So as we're waiting for this to deploy, one of the things that I commonly will do is I will ping the, the DNS entry. So it'll be NSX control and see if it responds. So it's going to send a ping out to 10.0.0.22. And the first ping is usually lost, but once it goes out and starts to respond, that's when I know I'm gonna get shot. So I'm actually gonna go up here and just do a dash T for a consistent ping. But now that it's doing its lookup, when it's finished doing that, I'll be able to then know that it's that much farther along once it's got an IP address. Because if I jump over here to my vCenter view, and I refresh this, I can see that it's being utilized. But what I don't see down here in the IP address is, is I don't see any of the information, like VMware tools are supposed to get installed and be able to extrapolate some of that config. And right now that's not actually happening. So I'm waiting for the ping to reply. So once the ping replies, I know that the IP addressing por portion has taken place. Because if I'm over here and I go to the launch the web console and the console loads, and then I log into it, admin, and then the password. You don't get a lot, right? There's no real information here. But when I wait for the ping to reply, like it is now, I know I'm in good shape. I come back over here, I refresh, and then eventually this will get populated and we'll have, everybody will be good to go. Because then I'll know this guy's about ready to be finished. I come back over here, I refresh this and then we'll go from deployed to operational and active and we'll be in good, good, uh, in good shape. So I'm going to pause for the moment until that's finished. All right. Well, that's a good sign. We go back over here and there we can see the IP address has been extrapolated. So that means that everything's looking pretty good. I can actually go ahead and close that out. All right. Next step is to go to host preparation. We can see that we have two different clusters, compute and management. I'm gonna start on the compute nodes first, which is going to, we're gonna to need to verify a few things first. So let's go back over here. One of the first things we wanna do is on the hosts, is click on a host, go to the configure tab, come down to TCP IP configuration, and make sure that you've got the DNS information populated per host. And we are looking pretty good across all these endpoints. Why is that important? Well, that's important because when you start to push the bits from NSX Manager down to your ESXi hosts, the ESXi hosts are going to need to do a reverse lookup, which is why when we come back over here to our DNS records and we look up for a forward lookup zone, we have a forward lookup zone created. The forward lookup zone is going to allow two things. So if we were to go... If you, do an, if you do a, come in here and I do a ping to DC1-VCSA1, right? This is doing a forward lookup zone. It's looking for this particular IP address, this name in DNS, right? And it finds it right here. It says VCSA1, boom, there's its IP address. Now, what's gonna happen with the, with the reverse lookup zone is you're saying, I don't know the name, but I do know the IP. So the IP, in this case here, is 10.0.0.x. If we go back over here to lab.local and we click on here, the right click and go properties, there should be an associated pointer record, which is going to help the reverse lookup be effective. Meaning when the hosts go to find out what is the, who, who is 10.0.0.254, it's gonna find out it's the domain controller. And the domain controller, it'll go, the host will ask, will ask okay, well, where is DC1 VCSA1? And then he'll be able to correlate that. So that's why we need the reverse lookup zone in place in order for this whole operation to work. So I'm gonna go back over here to this guy. I'm gonna go into, click on and install. This will take a couple of moments and it's gonna push the NSX bits down to the host. And once that is complete, we'll see the NSX installation is good. We're going to do that per host, so it's going to install the agent. The agent will take some time to push, so it'll get pushed down to the host. There will be a uh, download offline patches, 
all that good stuff that goes along with it. And we're scanning the host to make sure everything is good to go. This will take probably five or 10 minutes to do depending on how many hosts you have. And then we'll do the VXLAN installation. The VXLAN installation is going to be pushing the VTEPs down to our hosts. So we come over here. We're not gonna see it right away because of the configuration that we have in play, but eventually you'll see another VM kernel adapter that'll be a VXLAN network stack. Right now we're gonna go to the default one. Everything will get pushed down and we'll start to see everything get populated on the host. So this will take some time. We're gonna go ahead and refresh this. We can see that the NSX installation is in progress. Firewall is not configured at the moment. So I will pause until this is further along. And once we get done with the NSX installation, we will push the VTEP information. We need to do both compute and management because on management, if we go back over here to our topology, you can see that we have our edge services gateway and we also have our DLR control VM. What will end up happening essentially is from the DLRs, there will be an uplink on the DLRs configured for, with a logical switch that connects to the edge services gateway. The edge services gateway will then connect outbound with the distributed port group. So it'll look more like this, where we have our logical switches right here, right? This is what we're basically deploying right here. So let me go ahead and actually bump this over to be two. And there we go. The name, the, uh, the naming convention is kind of irrelevant at this point, but um, you'll have our logical switches right here. And then what we're going to do is the DLR will have an uplink on another logical switch that'll connect up to the ESG. The ESG will have a, a distributed port group configured pointing towards the outside, inter, uh, the outside interface. That's basically what we're going to be deploying. So I'm going to go ahead and wait for that process to finish up. This will take some time. We can see NSX installation is good. Then we're going to wait for the firewall to do its thing. And then we will wait for the communication channel to come online. This will take some time as well. I'm going to go ahead and begin the deployment of NSX on this host as well. Get that bad boy started. Again, this will take some time. Don't be in a big hurry. I'm going to do the NSX installation first, and then we'll circle back to do the VTEP config and all that good stuff. So I'm going to pause while that is doing its thing. All right, well, that's looking pretty good. I have both of my compute and my management nodes. I'm only waiting for the communication channel on this guy to come online. This usually takes a moment or two. But you can see on the compute cluster that we are good to go there. But the vert VM kernel NIC, so the VXLAN tunnel endpoint, is not deployed yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to configure VXLAN, or I can come up here and go configure VXLAN. Either, either way works. I'm going to configure VXLAN. And I'm going to create, uh, associate it to the VDS, which is the switch we're using. I'm going to give it VLAN 5. And I'm going to go ahead and use a pool. Now, I don't have any pools deployed for that. So I'm going to say new pool. The name is going to be the DC1 VTEP pool. Very appropriate, right? I'm going to go ahead and say 10.5.1, 24-bit mask, 10.0.0.0. 254 is our DNS server. And we just want to make sure that that, uh, that router is actually working. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in here. I'm going to say 10.255.1.101, port 2301, and hit the enter key. And if we were to bring this guy over, hit the enter key, the router is deployed. We can see 10.0.0.51, do a show run interface gig 2. Dot five. Beautiful. So we should be able to reach it here momentarily. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a range. And this range here is going to be 10.0.5. I'll say 11 through 10.0.5.20. That'll be the range that we're going to add. I'm going to click on save. That's our VTEP pool. Failover is Nick Teamy. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and allow that to do its thing. I'll come back over here. We're going to refresh this guy. Communication channel is unknown at the moment. So VM kernel adapter, if I come back over here, we can see the VM kernel adapter got deployed. 10.0.0.5.12. Perfect. Let's come over here. 
and we can see that there is a let me go ahead and let's see needs attention no clusters need a, needs attention so I'm gonna go ahead over here and I'm going to go actions and configure VXLAN I'm going to use VLAN 5 9000 is the MTU IP pool from the drop down use the DC1 VTAP pool and click on save that'll push VTAPs down to this particular host and I will go ahead and let's make sure that control plane agent to cluster controller is let me just make sure that I'm not sure why the controller why he is being difficult at the moment so he's oh he's got some that's okay though because he's on the VDS he will eventually come online so with that being said that's pretty much everything we need to have in play so if we were to do a okay there it goes communication channel is up it just that actually had me a little bit worried so our host preparation is 100% complete now the next thing for me to do is the logical networking settings so I'm going to come over here and we're going to set up the segment IDs. The segment IDs essentially are just going to be the range of v, uh, of uh, v, VXLAN network identifiers or VNIs that we're going to associate for every logical switch that's created. Now in NSXT, a segment is going to be a logical switch. Here in NSXV, it's called a logical switch and it gets assigned a segment ID. So I'm going to click on edit and I'm just going to go use, I'll say 5000 through 5099. I'm not going to turn on multicast addressing right now because it's not necessary. I'm going to click on save and that's going to give us basically a hundred uh, VNIs. Our VXN port is 4789 which is the default one. I'm going to click on transport zones. The transport zone essentially determines which ESXi hosts are going to be able to talk with which ESXi hosts. So if I come in here and click on add I can create a transport zone that is specific to the compute clusters. I can specify one that is spe specific to the compute or the management clusters, so on and so forth. So, one of the things that I like to do is I don't like to mess around with a whole bunch of different transport zones. I like to create what is required for the solution to work the way that it needs to, and that is it. So, I will call this one DC1 transport zone. And this is going to encompass both of my clusters, compute and management. The cool thing about this is when I go to do any advanced routing with the deployment that I'm going through and doing, this is basically what's going to allow me to do that. So when I go to connect my DLR to my edge services gateway through what they refer to as a transit logical switch, I'll be able to do that. NSXT is automatically plumbed for us we're gonna to have to do some of our own manual configuration, but it'll make it easier to understand when we get to NSXT. Click on add, and that's that. Now, when I go to create logical switches in this, uh, the upcoming videos, that will allow us to communicate back and forth and we'll associate our logical switches to the transport zones. Now I can create another transport zone. I'll go ahead and call this one DC1 dash this will be compute transport zone and it will only be available for the compute transport zone right so if i want to just focus on compute i can do that and that means that only the compute nodes that are in this transport zone or in that particular cluster will be able to communicate with each other uh, via vxlan but if i want to go and go above and beyond that i need to use the transport zone that is covering both the compute in the management clusters. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much it for this video. We were able to get our host preparation done. We're gonna start working our way through the rest of this as we're moving forward. We have some logical switches to do. I actually have to deploy more VMs in our cluster. I'm gonna go ahead and roll out probably three or four more just so we can test out how all this stuff works and get it operational the way we need it to be. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and I'll catch all of you in the next video.